Welcome to tonight's show, you're with Tom Brown and Steve, and this is NRL from the sidelines, and as we do every week, we are going to talk about the round of NRL that's just been played. Gentlemen, how are we today? Mm. We're good. Football. Football's back. Football. Well, maybe. Well, we watched some football. <laughs> we did. Well, we got a we weekend did. out of football. Hey, just, just side note, I know that nobody out there cares, I just noticed that the camera has little lights on the side of it when you turn it on. Yeah. Yes, can you stop shaking the table, by the way? Nothing Sorry. gets past Brian. Jeez. It only takes three years. Yeah. <laughs> three years, and I've just noticed. Smells uh, weird. Yeah, and, and now you're on the pulse. And you know what? That explains why you make some of the comments you do about football. It truly does. That answers everything. Uh, walk into it. Uh, you did. You All right. right. Gentlemen, before we get started about the games we played next week's game, I want yep. to talk about the state of the game given what is going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have a couple of issues. The, the NRL have now announced that we're going to be starting to play games in closed closed mm-hmm. stadiums. Yep. So all the supporters will be locked out. So it'll be empty stadiums. Um, how do you feel about that? Well, public public health and safety comes first. Yes. And, and you know, gatherings of people are risk is risky. Why it's five hundred or more? is a bit beyond me because yeah. 500 people can infect each other as much as 10,000 people. But, um, uh, you know, you only have to have a half thousand oh. people who are infected. Uh, but, look, I, I, th- I think in the end, you've got to be seen to be doing their... I work in a hospital and it's like bedlam there. Um, yeah. Because, you know, we're, we're trying to do the right thing and wait for everybody to come in and, and try to do the right thing by, by our staff as well. Um, I, I'll be very surprised... Um, <laughs> That there may be some crazies who will actually park themselves outside the stadiums. Oh, uh, yeah, just just so you well, know, just so, just, well, just, well, just, you just no, 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 just just so you know, I've I there's uh, as as uh, all of you are aware, I'm a Manly fan, and um, the one or two of the sites that I belong to, which are very large fan based sites, I don't understand why they're not all members, but anyway, yeah. um, have decided that uh, groups of. Uh, Supporters are going to go down outside of Brookvale Oval and watch the game on their mobile devices <laughs> to try to try and create atmosphere and encourage the players <laughs> yeah. in the ground. Yeah. Well, and I'm just going. That's, I mean, that's bizarrely. Um, mm. It's a good idea, but I actually thought about that myself. But not Ooh. that sort of thing. Yeah. Why wouldn't a club over this weekend have recorded yeah. cheers and all well, that sort of stuff? Every yeah. time their team scores. Players. Well, even better than that, have a big screen out the, out the out, outside the stadium for for fans to watch, and pipe their cheering into the yeah. stadium yeah. or at the Leagues Club. Well, no, 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 because yeah. I'm like it to be totally silent if my opposition ever scores. <laughs> so I only want the cheering for when. Oh come on, who's going to Steve? Who's going to tell the refs to get them on side? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because, there is that. because the, rap, the borough rehearsed that, you can tell. Oh, yeah, they for absolutely sure. rehearsed, okay. and they so, do it all game long. So, so let's let's talk mm. about the Warriors going home after round two. You reckon they'll go? Yes, I do. I do, and I, and I honestly think that we won't see the Warriors in this year's competition. So f- for those who don't know, if you don't know, then um, uh, the New Zealand government mm. has actually closed down their borders so that you can't get into the country as of today, I think the, the thing is. Or if you go in, you can't get out. One no, you, no, you got. To, if you go in, you got to self isolate. That's right, self isolate, and, and that and that means that they they can't to play. play for two weeks. That's yeah. right. Yes, which, which also then means if they do decide to come back to Australia, they then have to self isolate for another two weeks. Yes. So that's four weeks of no football. Yeah, yeah. We, if yeah. the Warriors go home, we won't see them in this year's competition. Hmm. Well, it depends on how on how quickly the paranoia about the virus um, well, finishes. He, here's what I don't want to get into on this show: is I don't really think we need to get into. <laughs> The paranoia. Well, okay. Well, no, no, no. I'm just. I mean, other than I'm just saying toilet paper. Let's be yeah. honest. I'm, I'm just saying the the prediction is that everybody's going to get it. So, good luck. What are we? What are we're just preventing the inevitable. So, well, I, I actually think I actually well, think the NRL competition will continue. It needs to continue. Uh, there's uh, television money and rights that are tied up in it. They will play before empty stadiums. If the Warriors are not in the comp, then by periods okay. it is. I think I think the aim aim of the all these measures is to slow it down so that you can actually um, manage it better. Because yes, if everybody gets it, right, well, I'm not convinced about that. But if, if if a lot of people or a majority of people get it, you don't want them to get it because they've been in big crowds and then have um, 
Uh, it's just unmanageable, uh, unsustainable. You yep. s- slow it down and stretch it out a bit. And um, a- yeah. and once we get to anyway. winter, that's the that, that's hard part because everybody gets sick in winter and is yep. it corona or is it not? Um, okay. anyway. Outside of our hospital, we've got testing stations yep. um, and people lining up to get tested. Okay. Um, I want to ask you both a very quick question and then we're going to move on to the games. Yep. Um, there's been a lot of suggestions of what we should do. Um, cancel the season, um, spectator the stadiums, have magic round every every week. Mm-hmm. You're, you're Peter Volandis. Mm-hmm. What would, Tom, if you were Peter Volandis, what would you do today, knowing what you do today? So not thinking about what may happen or what you'd like, but given the information you've got today, what would you do? Well, short notice, thanks for that. Um, uh, I'd Always stop appreciate saying, short notice. I'd stop saying rugby league. Yeah, That's I, the first thing. Doesn't that annoy you? It annoys me. Rugby uh, league. Look, I, I, I love you, Peter. I, yeah. I, look, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he's he's defending the game. A lot of people can criticise him for going in cap in hand and asking for money when there are probably more important needs, or there yep. definitely are more important needs. But his job is to defend the game and to keep the game alive. Uh, I don't know what else he can do. Yeah. Um, Grant, what would you do? I'd play in empty stadiums. Yep. I, I think I think of paramount importance is the, the uh, continuity of the broadcast deal. Yep. And if there are... If there are no games, yeah, that means, water. And, and it doesn't. It doesn't matter that um, that um, that the stadiums are well. It does matter the stadiums are, are empty, but it will matter if the game stops and uh, player yeah. payments stop. Mm. And and I don't say that because I do think rugby league players more mozzies. I do think rugby league players are overpaid, but I certainly think that they have commitments with uh, the contracts that they signed. Yeah. And okay. if we don't play the game, then there's no money and they don't get paid. And I don't think that that's fair on anyone. No. Okay. All right. Let's go on to week one, gentlemen. Um, Eels defeated the Bulldogs 8-2. Tom, what did you think? Did, do, you, do you look at the, at the Eels now and say, wow, they're a top four side? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... I think you turn the ladder upside down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was interesting because I think everybody probably imagined that the Eels would, uh, at Bankwest, first round... Uh, you know, a lot of people were saying that they are potential premiers this year. Yep. Um, I thought it was a pretty lacklustre uh, performance by them, but you have to give it to the Dogs and their defence. I thought the defence was exceptional. In fact, both teams defended pretty stoutly, but I, yep. I think I noticed the Bulldogs' defence a whole lot more. The problem with it is that the Eels' attack was very scrappy, but I, I can see that'll get better. Uh, sadly, the Dogs just had nothing in, in attack. You know, um, it, it's surprising that it took 65 minutes for the Eels to score. I yeah. think that says something about the the the, uh, the Bulldogs' uh, determination to defend. But uh, look, I think the Eels came out the better of it, even though they they won the game. I think they looked a bit better, but uh, they're nothing. They're a shadow of what people expected at this point in the season, mm. and True. I think they're going to need to have a hard look at themselves. I, I've got to say, I thought the Bulldogs were impressive. Yeah, they. I mean. You know, for, for, for the team that they are, mm. you know, they're, they're not going to give the competition a shape, but at, at least for the team that they are, they, they hung in. I could cheer for them and go, good on you, yep. because you stuck in there and you fought hard and you didn't give up. And, you know, they had every reason to just drop their heads after yep. what had happened that week. Um, but, yeah, good on them. I, I thought it was a creditable performance and, you know, they went down swinging. Mm. Went down swinging. Yeah, and I think they did. Yeah, and the eels. I think the eels are going to have to look at themselves. Um, uh, their attack was pretty ordinary, really, and and it could be that could just put it down to not being crisp, but to being rusty. You know, real football. Who knows? Um, yeah, it's a weak one. So we saw the Raiders defeat the Titans twenty four six. I have to say, after watching that game, I just can't see the Titans getting off the bottom. Now, new coach, a couple of new players, but they really didn't show much more than what they had last week. Well, the expectation was there that they were, they were supposed to uh, be a better team than last year, but it doesn't appear as though that that's the case. Yeah. That's the, the simple thing is, and George Williams actually looked reasonable in that game. I thought I thought it would take him a little bit of time to, to find his legs and yeah. to... Well, let's face it, he, he, he's he been brought in to win them a premiership. Yes. You don't finish second and then change your halfback and yep. 
finished halfway down the ladder. He's been bought in to win them the Premiership, just like Cooper Cronk was at the Roosters. Yep, correct. Don't think he can do it, but he you was... Don't. I don't know, because I don't think they're going to win the Premiership. But I think that they were... They, they looked... They looked all right with him in the team. Jack White had another terrific game. He was absolutely on fire. Mm. Mm. He really was. I, he, I, th- I thought he was by far the best player on, on the field of the day. Mm. Mm. You don't agree? No, no. I, don't okay. agree. I can't no. not agree. And I think Jared Croker broke the... Uh, oh, points reached group. 2,000 yes. points. The youngest person ever to reach 2,000 points. Good on him. So the, the Titans have a lot of work to do. Do we agree? Sure. Heaps. Okay. Uh, let's go to um, the next game, which was the Broncos defeated the Cowboys 28-21. I have to say, mm. I was impressed with the Broncos. Yep. Do you think they can get better? Sadly, yes. Really? Yes, I do. Oh, sorry, I keep putting my hands in front of my face. Yeah. <clears throat> for, some, um, for some people, that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> see, I don't, I don't know whether they can. I, I, I was impressed with Brady Croft. Yes. I thought um, I thought it was interesting that he couldn't get a gig really at Melbourne, and when he when he was there, he was never uh, dominant. Mm. And so, uh, kudos to Anthony Seabold. He's um, cast him a lifeline, and he he looked impressive. Yeah. All the comments on uh, Friday night were that he was screaming in terms of calling and telling people where to be and where to go and taking control of the team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what they've lacked. And you, did you yeah. notice what Milford did while that was happening? He played his game. They just like, played his running right. game. Yep. He tried to find holes. And, you know, he wasn't fantastic, but he, but mm-hmm. he, he, he was back to what Milford can do yeah. um, because he didn't have to organise the team. And I thought that was... I thought Croft was, was pretty, pretty good. Um, what, did, what did you think of Holmes? I thought he, he was solid. He, yeah, he started off yeah. with a shocker. Yeah. And, and he injured his calf early on in the game, or at yeah. least halfway through. So uh, he soldiered on. Um, I was disappointed in the Cowboys. I thought that they... Um, uh, I, I don't know. There was something missing yeah. there. Particularly for, you know, new stadium, which is a pretty impressive stadium. Can uh, someone explain to me why the Cowboys... Uh, sorry, why Valentine Holmes was doing the kicking early for conversions? Penalties? <sighs> He, he, instead he missed, of... Well, in, mm. instead of... Um, oh, he usually kicks for... Instead Carl of Kyle Felt. Right, okay. Be- because he mm. missed two that are, I honestly I, think Kyle Felt only got. Kyle Felt kicked off. I didn't think he converted because it was, it was well, Thurston up until last year. Now it, was I can't Felt, it was Kyle Felt who was kicking it towards the end of the game. Mm, okay. And he was doing a hell of a lot better job than what yeah. Either way, Jones was doing. Either way, I think the Cowboys were, were good and I think the Broncos were <coughs> a step above. <coughs> Yes. Oh, yeah. that's horrible to say. And they, I tell you, and, and look, they were hitting hard. Yeah. The Broncos were hitting very hard. Yes. I mean, some Broncos hit way too hard. Way too hard. Tavita Pangai's got four weeks now. Yeah. yeah. You know, Early plea. He did a Latrell Mitchell actually. No, he did not. We're going to talk about manly players doing a Latrell Mitchell <laughs> later on, but we'll talk about that later. Don't glare at me like that. <laughs> look at the. Camera. I know the one look, incident you're you talking about way, as well. <laughs> you look at that one, glare. <laughs> yeah, you didn't do it well. All right. Yeah, see, so you know what I mean. Because you told me to bring it up this week. I did tell you to bring it up, and you won't see it again. Except for... Uh, we'll we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. We get to Saturday. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, Knights defeated the Warriors 20 nil. So it made it look the, the Knights look very good, but really I don't think they were having much competition really. I'm, I don't think they did. The Warriors had nothing. How bad are they? The, war- the Warriors or the Knights? The Warriors. You feel you feel for the, the Warriors because because they they really suck and, <laughs> and now they're stuck. They're stuck. They suck and they're stuck um, on this side. And and look, I really feel for them and their yeah. families. Okay, it's but a let me terrible ask, but situation. They they didn't play well at all. No. Do you think their minds went on the game? But they're thinking about what it's possible is potentially happening. No, because it wasn't even announced until. Until halfway through the second half. Okay, but but maybe they had a heads up that something was going to be done. I mean, jeez, oh, why? Because they're all into politics and they know the mind of the New Zealand Prime Minister. No, nah, they just suck. <laughs> Gee, I wish I'm glad I didn't say that. Um, didn't you? <laughs> the it's Knights, called irony. It's called a joke. Yeah. Oh. The Knights. You put them, You did you put them in your top four? 
Uh, not my top four. No. You you somebody put him must take him in the eight. Okay. You put them in the top four. I do. Are, are you super impressed that they're going to be a top four side given what they how they performed against Warwick? Mind you, it is only week one. It's round one. Yeah, Simon. yeah. I, I, I think I think they they will improve. I don't think they can get. Uh, I don't think they'll go worse. And let's face it, if you have a twenty point win, and people are saying, "Oh well, yeah, they'll get better," I don't think that's a bad thing. Hmm. And. I mean, they did get a leg up. The Warriors got hammered in the in the penalties. Yeah, that's what happens when you have a home crowd. <laughs> <laughs> that much? Uh, I don't know. Look, I mean, I've made some notes here about the penalties. I said the Warriors were poor, and, the, and I'm not convinced on the Knights, but yeah, mm. at all. Do we go to the match of the round and we talk about? Well, we do, but that has to be game. Sunday. It'll be yeah. Yeah, but I don't think you guys are talking about the same one. The Rabbitohs defeat the Sharks 22-18. Rabbitohs got out to a 22-8 lead. And you shouldn't say it like that because now it makes your team really look bad. No, I will, I'm... See, being the unbiased one of the three of us, I'm able to stand up and say I didn't think they played to their... NRF on the sidelines Facebook. Uh, again, we're having this bias uh, comment again. He can't so. help himself. We already. We, it was established last year, for those that are new, that I am the unbiased one. I don't know how that happened. Know. Because but Barry posted something <laughs> that said you were the most unbiased. But you know what? Barry just doesn't know you, that's all. Yes, he knows how biased Steve is. He, <laughs> he doesn't know you like we know you. All right. Sharks, sorry, Rabbitohs defeat Sharks 22 18. So you, you'll have to tell us what you thought of the game. Um, I, I, I was worried at 22 to 8. I was feeling comfortable at 22 to 18 with seven minutes to go. I was very concerned. Um, I thought Adam Reynolds did a, did a mighty fine job at captain. Mm-hmm. I think he played very, very well. I think a few South players played well. Um, but you know what? The Sharks hung in there longer than what I thought they would. In fact, you know, they, they came back. And I'll have to admit they were unlucky. Mm-hmm. That last got couple of minutes yeah, where there close. was a forward pass that was pulled back. Um, I mean, it was, a fair, it was a forward pass, but then so was a, a try too early for the Sharks as well. Um, what? It wasn't. It was. <laughs> it yeah, was continue on. Forward. Continue on. No, but you know what? I was impressed with the Sharks as well. Mm-hmm. I've got to say, I was very impressed with how they played. Well, none of us had them in their in their eight today. No. Yeah, and I still don't. Know them really yet. Um, Sorry, I'm still mozzy obsessed. Yeah, you are. Why? Yeah, I don't really that, that keep buzzing around me. With the mozzies or me? You're really distracting. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. So, do you guys want to say anything about the South or, or I didn't see the I was on my way to the other game. I don't. I don't get. I don't get I South. See, the last five so minutes, this so. is this is why Wayne Bennett is not, in my mind, a super catch anymore. Anymore. Okay. Anymore. Why? Because your your attack with Murray and uh, James Roberts and hang on, who plays outside of Roberts? Dane Gagai. Dane Gagai was on fire. Every time you went wide to that side of the field, Souths made metres, they looked dangerous, they could have scored at any time. You know where Souths tried to play them? Right okay. up the middle. Yep. Which is where your weakness is. Which is where, yeah, which is where your weakness you is. So? Yeah, you think so? Yeah, hang on, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. Yeah, Do you yeah. think so? Let me answer that question. Because you're, you're, you're insane. <laughs> You've got <laughs> Roberts, Gagai, yeah. uh, Luttrell, uh, Cody Walker, Adam Reynolds. Oh no, I oh, know it's our forwards that are the strength. No, they're not. They you're... were on top of the Sharks forwards oh, the whole please. game. No, you weren't. You weren't. They they were holding you, and it was only when you went wide you looked dangerous. And Braden Burns then, then you need also to read, then was you exceptional. Need to read some other articles about the game because everyone I've no. read says <laughs> South forwards are on top of the Sharks forwards. I don't need to read the articles. I Steve. think you I do. observed with these two things. So, okay. are you going to mention Luttrell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go and mention Luttrell. Say it with a straight face to the camera. Go hard, Luttrell. Go hard. <laughs> yeah, or hardly go. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, he, he's working into his position. That's okay. Come on, and seriously. And indeed be the case for in reality. Yeah. No, no. 60 minutes, four runs, 50 metres, okay. two errors. All right. He, he, he couldn't work out how to get into it, but he'll get there. 
Let's go on to Panthers defeating the Roosters 20. He cut that off very quick. 20 to 14. <laughs> yes. And I went to that game with a couple of Panthers fans and a couple of Roosters fans. That must have been a fun yeah. night for you. Well, it started out. started out mm. uh, really, really well. Um, look, I th- I've been trying to work out what, what really happened in this game, um, other than we lost and they won. Um, but the first 15, 20 minutes, I, it looked like the, uh, the Panthers were a bit shell-shocked or a little bit sort of not there. The Roosters were slick. Yep. They, they um, Teddy threw a couple of forward passes right near the line, which, you know, baffled me. But just rust, I think, more than anything, and, um, in, you know, in, in real game play. Uh, but after we scored the second try in the 19th minute, basically every, it was almost like they took their jerseys off and swapped them. Yeah. Because all of a sudden the Panthers had all the running, they had all the enthusiasm, they went into halftime 12-6 uh, down. Yep. But I was really concerned at that point in time because we weren't showing any signs of life. Yep. Second half, they came out and, um, look, there's, there's no doubt this, the, the Roosters were trying. They were really trying, but they were not making any metres up the middle. Um, they were defending pretty stoutly most of the time, but the two tries, I think, that were scored were scored by line breaks um, uh, through the middle and down yep. the side. Yep. And um, they just looked tired. The Roosters just looked, they looked tired. Um, so look, it's week one. I'm not making too much out of it. We had a couple of injuries. We lost Angus Crichton before the game started. I thought, and you can argue with me, I thought that the first try to the Panthers, Naden was about two meters offside when it was kicked. Honestly, look, it wasn't. Obviously, Brian doesn't. Yeah, of course he doesn't. But when I watched the replay, he looked like he was way offside. Um, but look, at the, in the end, it doesn't matter. So, so when I watched that game, I, I thought. Had Cooper Cronk been playing, you would have won it. He would have no, got you into a position. I, I don't think it was a whole team that. problem. I, I don't think it was a player can, can I, can I, can I, I actually I, think Kyle Flag and played a good player. Can I, I think he played a role. Yeah, sure. It was after that 15 or 20 minutes that uh, the interchange forwards came on. Hmm. You, The Roosters have lost uh, a couple of uh, big interchange forwards. And at that time, also, you've got to remember that a uh, kick out came on. Hmm. And so... So when those Roosters interchange forwards went off, their, their momentum slowed. Yep. But what did the Panthers do? They brought on one of the most damaging back rowers. Yep. And, so, and so all of a sudden, the, the, that momentum switch from the players coming off was also, it was exasper- exasperated by, exacerbated. Exacerbated, yeah, by kick out coming on, yep. and he was just punching holes straight through you. Yeah, he's an and with his player. and with his quick play of the balls, Appy Coruscant just oh, slayed you in the Appy center. Had, he he was blinder. on fire. He had a blinder, yeah. and he, he he may be the difference in that team uh, this year. Um, I thought Cleary was really good too, though. Yep. But he, then see, Cleary's tra- allowed to do what he does when he's got people like Appy around. Yeah, he can. I thought he controlled the game really I thought, well. As AEO had a terrific game as usual. Um, um, and Stephen Crichton came on for a short period of time, and he, you know, he was on for twenty seconds, and he took the ball from Josh Mansour with a vintage kick yeah. uh, into the middle and mm. scored. So look, they had more enthusiasm than the, than the Roosters. Um, I'm not overly worried long term. I think that the team's a little bit in disarray with positional problems and stuff. But and Kyle Flanagan's trying to learn learn the, learn the role. Um, I was expecting more after the World Club Challenge, to be honest. Yeah. But and they came out in 15, 20 minutes, and I think right, they're on. And you know. Robbie behind me is going, oh, this is terrible. This is shocking. We are awful. And, um, and I'm going, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this. And then all of a sudden, it was almost like the comments was almost like we changed jerseys. Yeah. Um, so, look, it was disappointing, but it's week one. And uh, yeah, well done, the, the Panthers. They showed a lot of enthusiasm. Yep. Come on, let's talk about disappointing. Well, I don't know. I was quite happy with Storm Brendan. See, it was 18 4. What was disappointing about that, Brian? Well, yeah. it was. But I think, I think you, you know what? I think you don't get how much I cop when my team loses. <laughs> well, it was four points to two until about what sixty minutes or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, there there are a number of things in that game that uh, look. I, I actually I actually thought that Manly were probably the better team defensively. Um, Hang on. Manly were the better team defensively. They led in eighteen points. Yeah. Um, the difference was, and and, uh, and no this will be this will be the probably the only time all year. <clears throat> Stephen, you were right. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Look at the camera. 
And say that again. No, I've said it no, once. No, 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 no. I didn't hear you. No, say you, it again. You heard it because you nearly choked on your tea. If everybody um, wants to hear it again. Why because, was I right, Brian? Um, the, I thought I thought the difference in the teams were was the five eights. That's not answering my question. No, it was. That's that because you said last week Walker is not a five eight, and I said, but he played there all last year. Okay. And um, I, I thought I thought the difference in the team was those two players. Well, I didn't Walker, think Munster, I didn't think Munster was that exceptional. Uh, sorry, Jerome, Jerome Hughes. Hughes Jerome Hughes. Hughes was yeah, halves are interchangeable at the Storm though. Okay. Um, Jerome Hughes was the difference between the two teams. If he was playing at five eight for the Eagles, we would have won. We, we, it's a no, big call. No, yeah. it's, but it's empty. Doesn't but play it's, for your it, team. But it's true because yeah. Yeah. let's face it, they scored three tries off kicks. Yeah. All by Jerome Hughes. Mm. Um, all, all to the one side of the field. Um, all when the defence was short. It was great vision, great, uh, great vision by by Hughes. Mm. And Dylan Walker didn't kick the ball once, and I think he ran it twice. Okay, I want to ask you a question. Yep. Uh, there's been a change to the rules where previous years it has been that if you if you kick to defence, um, mm. you can't tackle midair in the defensive the, the player the defensive player in midair. Mm. But you're always good with the attacking. Mm. Mm. Now they've changed it and said you can't do it either. Mm. So now what happens is is in goal, there's a, a bomb put up, you catch mm. it, okay? Yep. And then you're tackled midair, brought down, they said it was not a penalty try. I am not sure if this happened in this game. No, no, it was it was the Roosters Penrith game. Yeah. And then and then but it's a penalty. Yeah. Mm. So I get I get that, but now what's gonna happen is every team is going to play that. Kick in there. Jump up high and call for a penalty mm. as soon as someone lays their hands on you. Yeah. What do you do? You let them land on the ground and then score yep. because you can't touch it? It's, uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's I, it's dodgy. Problem. It is dodgy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, I don't know. I thought I thought, I thought that too. That wasn't the Roosters-Panthers game. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't... Yeah, yeah I, I didn't think there was a problem with the rule. Like, you know, bomb goes up, you want both your feet planted. I, I get that. But yeah, after watching it just one round of football, I'm I have concerns that, that rule won't last the season. Okay. So Brian, you said off air uh, that you're also going to remember there was an incident in the game that that we need to talk about. What one was that, Brian? Uh, Vunivalu yeah. lifting his knees, running no, into the no, line, not getting charged. No, yeah, that was about, reprehensible. Yeah, that it was. Good. He wasn't even charged. No. no, he's got fined. Agreed. Got That's fine. not the one I'm referring to. Could have broke someone's face with his knee. Because last week we were talking about Latrell Mitchell lifting and dropping there's, off players. There's mozzies everywhere in here. He's top. changing the subject. <laughs> so who did that? I didn't uh, that. Brian, who did that? I don't, I don't recall the incident. Maybe Brian, who did it? You're going to have to I, I think it was Moses Suley. Okay. In fact, I think he actually did it twice. He, he did it once and it wasn't as bad as the Latrell once. <laughs> but he did it. He did yes, do it. Thank you very much. Ooh. Yeah, because no, you, you know how Latrell picks up players and throws them back yes, into the ground. Yes. Well, Suli picked him up and dropped him. Right. Okay, so what about the elbow to the back of Vinavalu from Dylan Walker? What? Oh, what do you mean? What? He dropped. Honestly, I thought I thought they were World Championship wrestling. He dropped his elbow into him. He did. Go and have a look. <laughs> it might have been a square up for Suli because Suli's a bit dirty. Oh, I, I oh, think, in fact, I think it was straight after that. Yes, but he did. He yeah. dropped his elbow. Yeah. What about Cameron Smith and his milking of penalties? Oh, oh, he's, a, he's a master. He, I, I, he's you know, very, very good. Oh, he's very good. There was, at, at one point, Melbourne are under all kinds of pressure. Like I said, I thought the Manly defence was exceptional yeah. up until Jerome used put those kicks through. But um, Melbourne are under immense pressure. Like I think it was the second time we had him pinned down on their line. Fanoa Blake makes the tackle. What does Cameron Smith do? Taps the ball between Fanua Blake's feet, yes. pushes him, pushes oh. him over, and then goes, come on. He, he's the best there. <laughs> yeah. oh, but there was no... an awful lot of that during this dude. Oh, yeah. a, lot that of, was, a lot of milking. That was just genius. Sally, it's genius the Melbourne move. dairy farmers. <laughs> okay. I didn't say that. Um, the, the other incident that I, I want to um, uh, bring up... Okay, very quickly. Uh, that was, was from Tom. Tom said, oh, I hate that rule. Guess what rule it was? The stealing, this one-on-one strip. Yep. Yeah. Didn't bother me. Don't care. I still don't care. I, I still and that's care. happened to my team twice, mm. and I, I just don't care. I hate, I hate it. it. I hate it. I think if, if you are if you are smart enough to get in there and take the ball, go for it. No, because the problem yeah. is it's now happening almost every tackle. 
They're trying to steal the ball yeah. almost every time. Ta- so I just think takes I think away it slows things down because you, you're stopping with the ball and you're having to grab yeah. grab yeah, hold. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's go on, gentlemen, to the Tigers defeating the Dragons, twenty four fourteen. I saw the first 15 minutes of this well, and I thought the Dragons looked like they were on fire. Well, they were until the first until 16th minute right. and then they weren't. Well, I don't... See, no, I disagree. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Well, no, 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 because... Because you can. No, no, no. Look, I, I, I picked the Tigers mm-hmm. and I've picked the Dragons for the bottom four. All right? So yeah. don't, don't, don't hear me saying something's gone wrong here. The dra- How many teams this weekend bombed five tries? Dragons. Yes. Like, seriously, they just bombed them and bombed them and bombed them. They could have oh. been 30 points up yes, before the Tigers right. had well, scored. Their response yeah. would be, well, look, we can cre- we can create opportunities. We just need to execute better. So, you know what? I, I think this game, and, and I know that Benji was exceptional. and was. And the Tigers, you know what, despite being down, came back into the game. Yeah. And, they, and they lost Luke Brooks mm, before, before the game. game. So, yeah, so, so don't, don't hear me saying that the Tigers were woeful. But the Dragons were actually a lot better than I gave them credit for. I don't agree. Of I course truly, you don't. Because you can. <laughs> I truly don't. I, 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 I didn't see a lot from the Dragons that I didn't see last year. Uh, no, I, actually, I'll take it back. Defensively, I thought they tried very hard. So, so are you saying the Tigers were not that impressive? No, I was quite impressed with the Tigers. But not, not to say that I think they're world beaters, no. No, I, didn't I, I think that close. performance up against the Broncos, up against the Panthers, up against Melbourne, they would have been smashed. Did they look like it's a top eight side is the question? No. I think that, I, well, I thought they were top eight side. The Which Tigers, one? The Tigers? No, I don't think yeah. so. Yeah. I think if Benji can play like that, they will be a top eight side. You know what? We should reevaluate our top eights after next week's rounds. Why should we do that, Brian? Just so that we can see whether we still agree with what we thought before the season. You know, I just thought. Yeah, sure. um, okay. One thing that did surprise me. The biggest surprise of the game, uh, Luciano Luciano Leilua. Yeah, he, he was... Like, sick. seriously, the, the, the Dragons could get 10 minutes out of him a game. Yeah. I, what, he played nearly 80, didn't he? Yeah. Well, like... And he's a big like, boy, too. Like, what a... He's lost about 8 kilos. Like, like seriously, around. what a turnaround. Yeah. Like, from a player that was, at best, a 10-minute bench player, yeah. to, to be in the starting team and absolutely, you know... Play with gusto for the entire game. He's got a great offload. He positions just, himself beautifully. I just thought that was impressive. And it was nice to see Adam Dewey have a good game as well. Mm-hmm. He had a couple of shockers. He did a couple, of, yes. But I, I think generally he had a very, very good game. But, like I said, you, I'm sorry to lose him from But South. you know what? It's only week one. Yeah, but he'll get better. Yeah, yeah that's right. He'll get better. Yeah, that's All right. right. Okay. I am going to throw to Tom. To Tom. What are you going to throw to me? Come on, you know it. You know it. Okay, another new segment. It's called Nailed It or Failed It. <laughs> Say that it's again, very, Tom. It's, very it's called Nailed It and Failed It. Or, or. Oh, I'm not sure about that yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you can see we're working so, on these things as we go. Talking about two different things, two new rules. Now, I know it's only week one, but I'm making my comments on, on week one about what I observed about this. Uh, nailed It, I think the... Um, Discretionary scrum position, I think, is a terrific idea. I actually really, really I like it. it. I really like it. I hate I it. I think that if the... Um, and you know I don't know as much about the game as you do, but obs- observationally... You said it. If, 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 if the team is down on their line and they get, they get the strum, they're always going to take it from the centre so they can go straight up the middle. But when you're down the other opposition's end, if your best attacking is on the left, then you're going to pack the scrum to the right. You know, and so it just gives you options to utilize your strengths, and I think that's a terrific thing. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing more of that. Failed it, yes. Can you guess what I'm going to talk about? Yes, Latrell Mitchell, no, no, Captain's, oh. Challenge. Captain's Challenge. Why? I think we had one successful Captain's Challenge in the whole two. weekend, two. two, okay, two. Um, look, that's yet to be uh, sort of, but I actually think it slows the game down. I and and uh, look, I think it's testament to the fact that they had. I don't know if everybody used their captain's challenge. No, they but didn't. there was a number of them that used, and um, only two of them were successful. There were there were ten um, used with two successful, and and you know, no, no. But you see, I, I was I was initially against it, as you're aware. However, I I like I like the way that they've done it at a breakdown in play, mm-hmm. and one of the ones that that went the right way was uh, 
the ref called uh, that Cherry Evans had dropped the ball and he would, he claimed that he kicked it. Yes. Yeah. And he did kick yeah. it. I saw now, that. That, yeah. that, was, that was just a mistake by the ref. Mm. Like, how do, how do you possibly say, yeah, yeah, we know the ref got that wrong, but okay, let's just roll it on. That's a great idea. Because we have to do it every other decision. They no, make. no. You know what? There were 10 all weekend. Yeah, but only, but, one, only one by each. But, each poten- but potentially, yeah. the better they get at this... Um, the, yeah, you, know, yeah. you could end up hang with on. five of them from each team. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. Uh, that, that, that means, really that means there, were, there were 14 possible, 14 possible no calls. 16. 16, sorry. Plus the two that were right means 18. There could have been 18 calls. There were 10. Yeah. And two of those were correct. Yeah. And I don't know what the heck Parramatta were thinking with the first one where... You don't. You don't ever trust that the prop forwards are going to knock the ball on. <laughs> I think they wanted to get no. in first. But you know, you know, this is this is this is my problem with this. Is I will guarantee at the end of the year the coaches will get together and say, we don't want one, we want two. Yeah, because be... one's not enough. It should be one per half. Yeah. Because what happens is early. What happens if yep. something happens? I'd say later? get rid of it. I'll get. Yep. That's what's going to. Well, and then well, it's going to go to see, three. See, see, I'm happy. I'm happy when. When see, I don't, I don't understand why lumbering forward knocks on the ball and the captain goes, oh, it wasn't a knock on. I, I get, I get for the clangers like the Cherry Evans one where he kicked it and everybody's going, what? Why? And he's the captain too. And he and, and, and the refs go, and, and you're looking at the ref going, why? That's why the rules there for the clanger. Hmm. As long as they keep it for the clanger, I think we'll be right. Yeah, okay. but we've got to keep it that way. But there was only. If you look at the, the game, was there was only two or three that have been used for the clanger. The others were just yeah because they thought. But it doesn't take any time, so it doesn't matter. No, no, I, they're I already they going to it set still the took scrum. about a minute. I'm, I'm to not a big adjudicator. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm failed at this moment. I'm okay. Well, I'm glad you're okay. I'm okay. So that's what's important. So long as you're okay. That's right, Peter Valandis, so, keep it up. Discretionary scrums nailed. No, hate Captain's it. challenge failed it. I 100% disagree with you. Ah, that's all right. So you'd reverse. I'm used to that. Yeah, I don't, I'm used I, to that. I don't think that discretionary scrum's a stupid idea. Okay, gentlemen, we're going to go into round two, where, which will be a spectatorless round of football. I thought you were going to say spectacular. <laughs> well, it will be a spectacular, <laughs> so spectacular so spectatorless round of football. Oh Thursday night, Bulldogs versus the Cowboys at ANZ Stadium. This will be a tough one. Oh, I think I think the Bulldogs have plenty of enthusiasm, but um, I don't think they can score enough points yet. So cows, mm-hmm. cows for me. By how much? Oh, that's right. It's the Thursday game. I tip footy NRL from the sidelines. Log in. You can still win because we're hopeless. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, some more than others are hopeless. No, I'm hopeless. Uh, I think I think it'll be probably an eight to ten point game. To the cows. Yeah. Don't. Sounds reasonable to me. I can't argue with that, really. Um, yeah. And I don't say that very often. I don't, I don't know how the, how the Bulldogs are going to control Tamalolo. He was exceptional the other mm. night. Mm. I, can't, mm. I can't imagine how they're going to contain him. Yep. Okay, so we're going to Friday night where the Dragons are playing the Panthers at Net Strata Jubilee Stadium. Tough. This will, this will be tough. So first two games at home. The Dragons. I'm okay. gonna go. I'm gonna go Panthers. Yeah, I think the Panthers are gonna have too Why? much. Why? <laughs> I, I think that they were good against the uh, against the Roosters. Yep. And, and I think that that's uh, a platform they can build on. They'll be buoyed by that for sure. Mm. Yep. Yeah, and the Dragons, I think, you know, they're gonna have oh, to do a hell of a lot of like work I said, this week. You, they, you bomb four or five tries and you lose. That's that's got to have a dent in your confidence. Mm. Okay. Do you, Do you think though the Panthers can play as well this week as they did last week? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think they learned all the lessons about themselves uh, last Saturday night. Okay. Yeah, it's so, a lot of self belief. Uh, I I think the Panthers, but I think it's going to be a very close game. I I would accept. I would expect it's probably two to four points. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a big. I reckon it might be ten. Mm. Panthers by ten, I reckon. So I, I think the Dragons. Should have learnt something from their game last week as well. So I just hope they're seeing their heads early. That's all. But you know what? Again, I was, I was. One thing I was impressed about with the the, the Saints is that their defence was exceptional. Yeah. I know they let in a few, but you know where last year they would just fall apart in defence. Yeah. They kept hanging in. They kept tackling for each other, and I think that will go on to hold them in good stead. Okay. 
Mm. Um, this Friday night game at 8 o'clock is the Broncos and Rabbitohs mm. at Suncorp Stadium. What a great time to play the, the Broncos when you can get nobody into Suncorp Stadium. Yeah, I suppose that's something. Oh, I'm still going to the Bronx. Yeah, I think the Broncos will win this Really? Mm. Yep. No, no Tavita Pangai? I've got plenty in reserve. I mean, plenty of other, other forwards. David Fafita had an exceptional game oh, the other day. Didn't he? Payne Hassel was good too. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big Even Flegler. I thought Flegler was good as well. I'm, I'm a big Payne Hass fan. Yeah. If there's if there's one player in the Broncos team that I would that I would take, it would be him. And, and look, there'd be a few more. And, no, and if the Hass, my number one. If the Hass can do what they did this week, uh, I think um, I think the Broncos will account for you. But it depends. Do you think the Rabbitohs will be silly enough to try to play the Broncos up the middle? Yes. Well, then you've got no chance. <laughs> <laughs> well. In Wayne we trust, as Barry used to say when he was at St George. Yep. I say the same thing. In Wayne we trust. That's right. We're saying Des we trust. Is he going to say in Wayne we trust again? Yeah, he'll be. Uh, rumor has it he's going back to the no, Dragons. Well, I'm I'm trying to work out why he, he's. Why would you? Well, I don't know, but anyway, maybe right. I've just offered him a lot of money. Sunday three o'clock, Warriors and the Raiders on the Gold Coast, I believe. I'm just not sh- too sure where yeah. this is going to be played. Seabus uh, Stadium. It is going to be yeah. Seabus, yeah. Yeah, Warriors by 50. I bet the Raiders by 50. <laughs> I was going to say, what are you drinking over there? Warriors will not win this game. You could steal the Warriors. No. Dif- the difficulty. Could steal them. No. I don't get enough to, to beat the Raiders. I, I, but... I honestly think they'll be yeah. thinking about going home. I'm... Yeah. Yeah, Raiders, Raiders will win this convincingly. Okay, let's go on to the Roosters and the Sea Eagles on at Saturday Leich- afternoon. At Leichhardt Oval now. It's been, oh, moved, it's been moved from, from Central Coast? Coast to Leichhardt. Don't why? know why. I don't know. Well, it's a Roosters home game. You'll have to ask them. So they don't yeah. have to travel. Yeah. So tell We've us, Steve. a lot of Italians in our team. Well, it's all right. No, neither neither, <laughs> neither the, the, the Roosters or the Sea Eagles supporters travel, so yeah, no, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah, you say I'm that. Here. So tell us, Steve, who's going to win that game? I think the Roosters will win. Oh, haters. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it was coming. <laughs> it'll, it'll, be, it'll, it'll be a line ball. I, I don't think the Roosters can play as bad as they did last week, honestly. I don't, I don't, I don't think they um, played bad. I thought they were outplayed. I don't think they yeah. played forward. I think they were really, they looked really rusty. They looked a bit tired and a bit disorganised. Um, Trent Robinson said he couldn't see that. He, he, he barely finished the set. Yeah. You know, their end of sets were terrible. Um, but the good news is... <laughs> yeah, okay, keep going, because you, yeah. you describe it manly. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. The good news is they can get better. I know they can get a hell of a lot better. They play yeah. better than that. Um, you know, credit to the Panthers, but they can play a lot better. And they'll need to be on to beat the Seagulls. Um, yeah, great rival with the Roosters and Seagulls. Yeah. Manly, um, manly slow starters. Every year we've won the comp, we've lost the first two games. I'm still picking them, but so, so I'm not this hopeful. Is, this is a Saturday afternoon game. Are you two going to get together to watch it? Because I'd like mm. to film it. Yeah. Oh, I well, I will be in Bathurst, so yeah, that's no. Right. Yeah, I, I will that. actually be is at a, a wedding. I will actually be at a wedding with my phone under the table <laughs> <laughs> during during the service. Five thirty. Oh, the service will probably be over. Oh, it'll be between the wedding and the reception. There you go. Have you got two hours between the wedding and the reception? I don't know. Are you anything? No. Okay. Oh, well, that's good. Yep. All right. So uh, I'm okay. going Roosters. Okay. Now, uh, Braden, I'm only joking. I'm there for you, brother. Don't worry. <laughs> He's not. Holy He's not. Really I forgot really that he not. watches the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Braden, we want a full report of what he's you, like you may... on NRL from the sidelines Facebook page. Full report. You may not need to explain it to Braden. You may need to explain it to his lovely bride, to me. <clears throat> Let's continue. Uh, so she gonna, doesn't watch the gonna, show. I said roosters. You're getting roosters, okay. Yeah. All right. And Brian, you're going oh, roosters. Please. Uh, Saturday evening, Sharks versus Storm at Net Strata Jubilee Stadium, which is new home ground for the Sharks. So that's the same place that the Dragons are playing. Yes, isn't it? yes. Yeah, it's yeah, Cobra. Yeah. 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 Uh, the s- s- Storm. Storm. Yeah, Storm. Storm. Two, two away games in a row. Um, no, I don't think they'll win easy. I think I think the Sharks um, will be better than they were against Souths. And I think I think the Storm. I, I don't see. This is my problem with the Storm. That they they go like this. That the, they don't have bad games. They don't. I don't think they have exceptional games. 
They just play. And and they play hard, mindful game. And so I, I think they will win this, but I don't think they're going to win a lot of games by a lot. Now, we have a, a, a person who watches a show, show called Sally. Mm. And we all know she's a mad Storm supporter. But mad. she always tips against but them. But whenever she tips against the Storm, the Storm win. Right. That's true, she oh, does. So yeah. that's the strategy. Yeah, okay. that's what oh. I'm, she did it the other night. She yeah. sub, she backed the Seagulls. You must have the sucked the tipping last year, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> your team lost Sally, three or four games. Sally, back your team. That's all I can say to you. Back your team. Don't. Anyway, uh, I'm Storm. Yeah, Storm. Storm, Storm. Okay, let's go to Sunday afternoon at four o'clock where the Tigers are playing the Knights at Like Art. This will be Stadium. a good game, I think. This, this, this will be a really good game. The Tigers, those have got confidence. This will be funny to watch a game at Leichhardt Stadium that's got nobody in it, considering that people always talk about the atmosphere at Leichhardt. Well, that would have happened yesterday, the day before. Um, yes. I tell you, I'm, I need to know where the Luke Brooks is playing. I think if Luke Brooks plays, the tough. Tigers win. So, yeah, yeah, but how tough. many weeks is he out? Mm. Mm. Just one? Two? No. Yeah, it's a good point. Like I'm, I will, I will go the Knights if Luke Brooks doesn't play. So who played in the halves? Uh, Reynolds. Reynolds, okay. And how was he? He wasn't he was, bad. He was good. Yeah. He was good. Um, m- more impressive was um Billy Walters. Right. He he played full eighty minutes and he looked okay. He looked good position. Yeah. yeah. I tell you what, Reynolds was at his niggling best. Oh, was he he got under the skin. Of <laughs> yeah. Like, George Fords and they wanted to oh, hammer him. Man, I know, I know yeah, they, they did. It went, yeah, it they, the report. They went, they went. Yeah. Chasing him. I yeah. know. I know they call him Grub, but <laughs> far out, he gets under their skin. What a niggler! Uh, there, there was one that I think they actually tried to chase him, and he, he, he ends up on the ground. He's just laughing his head off. This guy's standing over him. Uh, Titans and the Eels at Seabus Super oh, So what, who are we going? I'm going Tigers. Oh, I'm going like Tigers. Said, looks at all. I've got a fence seat until I know whether Brooks is playing. Okay, don't get splinters. Uh, Tigers and the Eels at Seabus Super State. Titans and the Eels. Did I say Titans? I thought you said Tigers. No, Titans. I'm just talking mm. through my beard. Talking through my beard, okay. Titans and the Eels. Mm. Seriously, you've got to think about this one. Oh, I want the Titans to win. <laughs> you got to th- <laughs> Hate is going to hate. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much you want something to happen. I can't believe you even have to sit there thinking about it. Well, I'm just thinking, do I want them to win enough that I'm going to pick them? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, the Titans would need to improve a thousand percent on last week. Yeah. And, and the Eels can improve easily okay. on last week's. Tom? Yeah, look, I, the Eels got more class, I think, in, in the team. Uh, they're going to have to be better this year, this week. Mitchell Sorry. Moses. I didn't say that, that say any names. And that will draw round two to a close. Indeed. And, Indeed. and possibly the season. Ooh. And possibly the season, depending on No, happens. they'll play in front of empty stadiums. I'm telling you, they can't afford not well, to. Well, Cameron Smith is already calling for... To, uh, Cameron Smith. ...to be suspended. Well, would he give his million dollars away to those players that can't afford mortgage repayments now? Oh, I don't know. No, so he can bu- he can stop. Sorry? Just <laughs> he can bump out. <laughs> Enough of that. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to the end of our show. Please go onto Facebook, our NRL from the Sidelines Facebook page, and make a few comments if you like. Uh, we didn't get a lot from last week, so we'd like you to go on and put some more. And Steve um, will keep you updated on what's happening if you don't get to hear the news. Uh, Steve will keep you updated on what the NRL is doing as the week goes on. Yes, you yes, will. Yes, you will. Because you've got your finger on the pulse. Which one? <laughs> well, you can okay. choose. Uh... Brian, you got anything you want to end the show with? Anything intelligent you want to end the yeah, show with? It was uh, Georgie Tafua's uh, 150th NRL game on Sunday and hit of the week again. Thank you, Georgie. It was a beauty. <laughs> but they also said that they scored the tries because he was out of position trying no, to run a hit. No, nah, he wasn't He wasn't out of position. See, see this is... Can I, can I just throw we're sick, yeah, Okay, we're, we're running out of time. Hurry up. Let me just throw this in because Georgie's copped a lot of flack from a lot of uh, quarters this week. Manly play a compressed defensive line. When they're when they're defending more than twenty meters out, George actually plays uh, two in. All right, so he can absolutely nail those centers and back rollers that are coming at him. The problem is, Jerome Hughes saw that and kicked wide. He is a big bloke who has the turning circle of the Titanic, <laughs> and he just could not make it back. Right. He wasn't playing out of position. It is the defensive structure of the team. Which was no good. <laughs> uh, Tom, you want to end with anything? 
Uh, no. No. Okay. And you? No. No. Okay. I'm, I'm Go, Georgie! We love you! Hit of the week! <laughs> okay, this is Tom Brown and Steve with an arrow from the sidelines, and thank you for watching, and we'll do it all again next week. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye.